Hello, welcome to Crypto University. In today's video, we will talk about ERC20 tokens and how to create them. My name is Roger, instructor at Crypto University, and I hope you will enjoy this video. Before we jump into coding of our own ERC20 token, let's go through some theory. So what are actually ERC20 tokens? ERC20 is a standard for Ethereum-based blockchain networks. What are they? We call them EVM chains, for example, Ethereum mainnet, BNB chain, Polygon, Avalanche and so on. ERC20 is now a standard which needs to be implemented by us such that our token is interoperable and compatible with different platforms and tokens. For example, if we want to list our token on Uniswap, we need to implement the ERC20 interface such that we can list it there and provide liquidity and that user can swap our token. What are the read methods that we need to implement for ERC20? Read methods are methods which don't change the state of the contract, which actually just read out the state of the blockchain. The first is total supply. Total supply just tells us how many tokens in total are there. Balance off. We can see with that how much a user has of our token. So let's say balance of my address, it returns 100 tokens. So it means I own 100 tokens. Allowance. Allowance is actually how much I allow to someone spending from my own balance. So let's say I give to Bob an allowance of 50 tokens means that Bob is allowed to spend 50 tokens from my own balance. We have the name, that's the name of our token, the symbol, the short name of our token and the decimals. So how many zeros are there of our token? Let's say we have decimal normally of 18. This means when we have a number with a one and 18 zeros, it means that that's one token. So we have 18 decimals behind. What are the right methods for an ERC20 token? Right methods are methods which change the state of the blockchain or the contract. This means we need to do a transaction and we need to pay for it. The first one is transfer. So transfer we are using to just transfer our token to another account. Let's say I want to transfer to Bob 10 tokens. I call transfer and it will take away 10 tokens from me and add 10 tokens in Bob's balance. Approve. I can approve another account or another user to spend from my own balance. So let's say I give to Bob 10 tokens and then that's actually the approval that he can spend these 10 tokens. Transfer from, that's used if you have already approved the token for someone he can use transfer from to transfer from your balance to another account so let's say i have 10 tokens allowed or approved for bob bob can now transfer from from my account to another account for example bob's account and he can spend 10 tokens from my balance increase allowance that's not necessary but it's often there too. Increase allowance is similar to approve, but actually it just increases the allowance. So let's say I have 100 tokens approved for Bob. I can increase allowance by 10. So after that, Bob will have 110 approval. If, I, if he has 100 approved, I call approve function with 10, Bob will have just 10 approved, so it just overrides it and the increase allowance just increase the allowance by the amount which I specify. What are the events? We have two required events for an ERC20 token. The first is the transfer event. This one needs to be emitted when we do a transfer, for example, for when we call transfer or transfer from. And we have an approval event which needs to be emitted by approval, so approval or increase allowance. These events are normally used to off-chain track user balances, transfers and so on. What are examples of ERC20 tokens? 
We have, for example, stable tokens, USDT, BUSD, USDC, and so on. These are tokens which are packed to another value. So let's say USDT or these tokens, they are packed to the US dollar. We have utility tokens. Often that's tokens from decentralized exchanges, which have actually utility, which we can use. For example, we can reduce fees and so on. If we own this token or we stake this token in some staking pools. Uniswap has uni tokens, PancakeSwap um, has cake tokens and so on. There are meme tokens. They don't even they don't really have one utility. They just represent one meme. Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, Pepe, and so on. And we have wrapped tokens, which actually wrap native currency. For example, Ethereum, BNB, Matic. These are native blockchain currencies, which are used to pay transaction fees. And we have a wrapped version of them, which actually we can deposit, deposit the the native token and we can get out wrapped ERC20 tokens. That's often useful to have interoperable um, ERC20 tokens from native currencies. We have seen required functions for our ERC20 token. Now we can add more extensions to it. We can, for example, make it burnable. So destroying our token to make it deflationary. We can add a possible extension which can pause transactions in an emergency situation. We can add a mintable function, that's the opposite of burnable, to mint new tokens and make it inflationary. We can also add snapshots to it, which are balances of users in the past for a, for a certain timestamp in the past. This is often used for governance, so if you have an ERC20 token, which decides the voting power of each user, we want to have a snapshot at the time when we started the voting. Let's jump into coding of our ERC20 token now. We will use Remix and Open Zeppelin implementation. Welcome back. Let's implement our first ERC20 token now. I have opened Remix and I have my new workspace, just one clean workspace without any contracts and anything. And what I would like to do is I would like to use the Open Zeppelin library. Open Zeppelin provides standard contracts, standard implementations for usual use cases like ERC20, ERC721, governance, access control, and so on. And we would like to take the implementation from them for the ERC20 token. Let's go to their repository and we can see they have contracts here. As I said, governance, proxies, security, and so on. We go to token, ERC20, and we can see the ERC20.sol. That's the smart contract implementation from them. And when we scroll down a little bit, we can see that they are actually implementing all these functions that we have seen in the theory section. For example, the name function, symbol, decimals, total supply, and so on. So what we are doing now is we are taking this implementation and we are creating our own contract, adding this implementation from Open Zeppelin. We are going back to Remix and we create a new contract called supertoken.sol. And what is first is always our license identifier and then the Solidity version. That's always the first for a smart contract and then the contract itself, supertoken. And that's already a functional contract. When I save it, you can see that it already builds our contract. It compiles it and it builds it to binary code. So what we want now is we would like to import this open Zeppelin contract. And as it is hosted on NPM, we can directly copy that to our import um, statement 
and we can now go to the folder or to the path where this erc20.sol is. So it's in contracts slash token slash erc20 slash erc20.sol. So slash token slash erc20 slash erc20.sol. And when we save that, we can see that it compiles again. And when we go to dependencies, we can see that an npm package is installed from Open Zeppelin, and this was now automatically added to our workspace. So the next step is we would like to inherit from this contract. So we would like to copy this code to our contract. And for that we are using is so super token is ERC 20. We save it and we can see there is an error. The error actually specifies that we didn't call the constructor of this ERC20 token. We need to call the constructor. Let's come back to this, to this, uh, to this contract and we can see that it, it has a constructor and we need to call it with a name and a symbol. That's the minimum. So we need to specify a name and a symbol for our ERC20 token. So let's do that. Constru constructor that's a basic constructor and we can now call the ERC20 constructor uh, like that and we had the arguments super token SP so like that, we are calling the constructor from this inherited contract. Let's save it and we see it successfully compiles. One thing more that we can do now is if we just deploy this contract now, we have a perfectly fine ERC20 token. However, there will be any token minted. So the total supply will be zero. We, anyone will have any token of it. So we can do in the constructor, which will, be, which will be executed on deployment, we can add a mint function to initially mint some tokens to some user. So for that, we call the mint function, which the internal mint function, which is implemented in this ERC20, um, token you can go here let's let's check that mint you see this here so what it actually does it increases the total supply by the amount we specify and it increases the balance of this user for who we would like to mint it so for who we would like to mint it i would say the message sender that's the one that is deploying the contract. He will get deposited this amount of token and we just mint for the start, we just mint 100 tokens. And we can see our contract perfectly compiles. And that was it actually for the basic functionality. Now we can go to this one, deploy and run our code we choose Remix Virtual Machine, which is actually a virtual blockchain where we can deploy it. We have some accounts here available, which we can use, um, some gas limits and so on. So what we can do, we can choose our super token here and we can, and we can deploy it. Down here, we say a deployed contract. We can open it. And we can see all the write functions that we have and all the read functions. So when I press the name, we see it's called super token, symbol, SP, total supply. We have 100. And when I use balance off, I can check that was the deployer. I can check this address, balance off this address, and we see it's 100. So this, this account owns all the 100 tokens. What I can do now is I can transfer some tokens from an account to another one. Let's do that. So we take our 
account which owns all the 100 token tokens and we transfer it to another account i choose here another one this ab8 which i will just copy to the two variable so to this address i would like to send him 10 tokens i need to come back here again to the first account 5b which has 100 tokens to actually execute this function from this account let's call it transact and we see it was successfully mined the transaction so that was a right function we changed the state of our contract because we sent 10 tokens from one account to another let's see how it looks with the balance of so the balance of our account that had 100 tokens now has only 90 tokens and when we go to the other one and we call balance off we see he has 10 tokens now let's try the approve function so let's take again our first account which has now 90 tokens he wants to approve someone to spend an amount of token so let's take again our a ab8 that's our second account that owns 10 10 um, tokens and we say okay we allow you to spend 30 tokens we we just go back to the first account again to make the transaction from that so i would like to allow this account to spend 30 tokens that's it if we go to to um, allowance allowance is here the owner we add our first account the spender we add our second account and we call it and we see the allowance is 30 so the spender can spend 30 tokens from this owner and what he can do now is he can transfer from so the second account can now transfer from the first account to another account let's say to himself 30 tokens and now what we can do is we can go not to the first one but the second account so we call this transaction from the second account that has the allowance to spend this amount and when we transact that we see it was successfully mined and when we see the balance of the second account it now has 40 tokens let's summarize that we have created our own ERC20 token using the open sapling standard and you can see it's really really simple we just need to specify the name and the symbol of our token and we need to mint some token to some account and that's it with that we can just deploy it to the blockchain and we have created our own token thank you